And now I'm introducing our friend Hans. He was born close to New York from Dutch to Dutch parents. He attended high school in the US, graduated with a degree in classics from the University of St. Andrews in Scotland, and began his educational career first as a lecturer and headmaster of a number of Catholic schools in uh, the US and then in Liverpool, where he now heads the prestigious Liverpool College, one of the city's oldest institutions. In 2015, he managed to convert the college's charter from an independent school to uh, an academy that is a specific kind of school in the UK, a state-funded academy, making access to an education of excellence. And uh, normally in the UK, only the wealthiest uh, young people can attend this school, but now no longer. So a minister in the Blair and Brown government said that maybe perhaps that was the biggest breach in the Berlin Wall dividing the private and state sectors of education. And uh, just by accident, it came through the figure of Don Giussani and uh, he was somehow struck by what he wrote about education. And that's how he went back to his face and changed the school so radically. He wrote a bio, a biography in the lockdown year when he said, I didn't have much to do. It's confessions of a headmaster, of a principal. And here he writes about his way of being a teacher and principal in the light of the educational risk. So my question is, what did you discover and what changed so the encounter with the educational risk? Well, thank you, Ezio. I have to be honest uh, with everybody here. It's completely extraordinary for me to look at you. Um, uh, if you had asked me where Rimini was uh, two years ago, I, I probably would have pointed to Sicily. And, and uh, if you uh, had said uh, Luigi Giussani, Comunio e Liberazione, I, I probably would have thought that was a pizza and the man who made it. I had uh, no experience. So for me, uh, being here two years uh, after the first time I heard his name uh, is, is, is a little miracle. A little context, I, I am the head teacher of uh, Liverpool College. Uh, the school is 180 years old. It uh, has 1,700 pupils, uh, 250 employees, teachers and other staff. And uh, as Ezio explained, uh, since 2012, pupils of all backgrounds uh, can come to the school. Uh, it is not a uh, school with any particular religious uh, orientation. I, I always like to tell people that uh, my Muslim pupils are the only ones that believe in God. Um, <laughs> during lockdown, I was lost because uh, I had been a head teacher for 24 years and I I didn't know what to do with myself, and so I played on YouTube until I found a video from uh, Father Albacete, who I had heard around the time of 9-11, talking about uh, religion, really. And one sentence in this long video, 
he mentioned the name Luigi Giussani. And uh, I bought the book, The Risk of Education. And I was struck. It was like uh, lightning. Uh, here was, at a very personal level, a complete anatomy of my desire to educate. An, an explanation of everything that I had wanted, had worked for, believed, and could never find the words for. So I did, in fact, read his 1,400-page biography, and that was a bit boring, to be honest. Uh, time. <laughs> and, uh, and I began to read everything about him. And everything he ever said about education. And here was somebody who understood, who even in translation, could communicate a passion, a passion for humanity, a passion for people, a passion for, for freedom. And this made me realize what I had been doing, and it also made me realize what I had to do in the future. And it made me throw into the rubbish bin everything that the government sent me every single day. <laughs> Three things especially I discovered. Totality in education. The idea that education is literally about everything. And I knew that, but I was working in a system and in a paradigm that cut out and systematically annihilated any non-scientific, uh, non-measurable uh, thing. And I was working in a positivist uh, nightmare uh, factory. The, the second thing was the uh, Giussani's emphasis that there has to be an hypothesis about this totality, that to educate, you need to give somebody to something they can verify, something which is part of their life, something which they can be against, something which they can be for, something which they can argue about, think about, talk about, as it affects everything. and. I don't think my school provided that, and I could see that that harmed the people that I was trying to educate. Finally, freedom, the, the risk of freedom, understanding and teaching children what freedom really is. Not license, not I get to do whatever I want, but the response of my humanity to the other and to reality. So this is what it did personally, but what changed in the school? Well, well, the, the, the first important thing that happened was I became a member of the CL community in the Northwest of England. And I, I, lear I learned a lot about great Italian food. And I found a friendship that, that could continue to feed me and sustain me as I tried to change the school. 
Then I wrote two books, which Ezio has mentioned. I rewrote completely the religious studies textbooks in the school. We started a publishing house. We uh, produced a podcast called Imagination in Education. Where we, without mentioning his name, asked celebrities and other famous people what they thought about Gisani's ideas. Then we changed the school day so that we would have a lot more time for friendship, for reflection, to open up that possibility. And then finally, uh, we rewrote the philosophy of the school. It doesn't mention the mystery or Giussani, but if he could read it, he would demand the copyright and he would demand a lot of money. <laughs> uh, because it is an attempt to introduce his ideas into a non-Catholic in British school. These are just schemes. The his plans. Uh, the most important thing is that he, he changed the way I look at my pupils and at my colleagues. Bella. Hans uh, wrote uh, another book entitled uh, Full Life letters to my students. And here he collects all the advice, the pieces of advice he gave parents and students over the years before he came across uh, Father Giussani's uh, thoughts. And he explains how and why he was wrong and where, without even realizing it, he said the right thing. I find it a very um, original approach. So this is the theme of the mistake, the theme of the good we want to do as headmasters, as teachers towards our students. So the good in the educational act and the theme of the gaze, of the look, because if you admit your mistakes, that means that you can look at yourself and you can do that in comparison with someone else. Hans, you talked about uh, the, the, this aspect linked with the gaze. Can you say something more about this idea of a mistake and what is the good in the educational act? And what is this uh, gaze you talked about before? Mm -hmm. When uh, I think of what head teachers try to do, I'm uh, reminded of, of a, a quotation from the poet uh, T.S. Eliot. Not quite Leopardi, but also very good. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, he says, man constantly and I'm going to substitute in this quote for man, head teacher. Head teachers constantly try to escape from the darkness outside and within by dreaming up systems so perfect that no one will need to be good. So I spend my days thinking of even better ways to control my students. But this is not possible. 
I, I, I think fundamentally my meeting with Giussani was a, a moment of recognition of futility. Uh, head teachers, human beings, they want to remove the risk of freedom. And I see this tendency over and over again in educational practice, especially uh, in the United Kingdom. There's a belief, uh, it was already discussed in Plato's Protagoras, that you can teach people to be good. The, our government ministers in education believe that if we spend more time telling children what good is, they're going to be good. But that's, think of your own experience, as Giussani would teach us. It doesn't work that way at all. It's uh, words on the wind. It's all it does is it creates moralism and then some activism of a kind of superficial kind. The, the only thing that has ever worked in schools is the gaze of a person who loves me, who addresses my humanity, my freedom and presents to me the possibility of a relationship through a meeting with a person who, who shows me, who makes real to me something transcendent and positive about reality through such a person, my affectivity is awakened. I wake up and then I'm ready to learn. And then I'm ready to listen. And then I'm ready to grow. This is education. And unfortunately, this fallacy of uh, endless, I, maybe you were spared this in Italy, but in the United Kingdom, we have ever more lessons about how to be good. There are more and more lessons about how to be good. And uh, I, I hope my pupils don't find this uh, on YouTube, but it's all a waste of time. <laughs> It's, it's not going to make them good. It's what, what makes um, that, that gaze, that, that, that gaze of love, love for the freedom of another, wanting what's best for another person and allowing teachers to educate that uh, and, and to, to, to talk about that. If you think about your own education, whether it's your parents or your teachers, it was the beauty of that gaze, of their love and their care for you. That's what inspired you. That's what made you learn. That's what made you have the confidence to learn. Because learning can only happen when someone is certain of something positive. And a child, particularly, can only be certain of a, of a positive love. This, I knew, I knew that, I knew implicitly, I, intuitively, and from my own experience, I knew that this was true in education. I, I knew that in all the schools where I had worked, the only thing that ever really worked was a relationship like that. But it was never talked about. There were lots and lots of systems and theories 
ideologies, really. And not enough time and not enough honesty was spent on this fundamental sine qua non. So, Father Giussani made explicit for me and made explicit in our school and in the vocabulary of our school something which is not explicit in schools at all. At least not in the United Kingdom. And what it also meant is that we recognized there was a communitarian aspect to this gaze. Because it's when I see my colleagues have this gaze, that's what inspires me. That's what creates the unity which makes the school great. And to recognize it, you've got to talk about it. You have to say to each other, I, I recognize this in you. I see your look. I see your gaze. That's what makes a great school. This is very, very difficult. There are no books that you could take into a school because if you took Giussani to everybody, they would say, now what? But it is true. It is true. And that's where we have to start.